All right, Structure Pros. Right here, we're going to be doing an example on indeterminate truss, and we're going to be analyzing it using the principle of virtual work. So we're asked to find all reactions and bar forces. That's from the 30 kip load, P. And that's part A. And then part B, we're asked, what if support B settles 1 inch and support C settles 0 0.5 inches? So we're given the truss shown here. A, B, C, and D, and we know that the area of each bar is 2 inches squared and that the E modulus of elasticity of the material is 30,000 kips per square inch. So what are our steps? Well first we're going to release the structure. We're going to take out a redundant. Then we'll write out our compatibility equation, analyze the release structure with real loads, followed by analyzing the release structure with the redundant, uh, that's a unit load acting where the redundant was that we released. And lastly, we will solve the compatibility equation, and that will tell us what reaction we have at our redundant, allowing us to solve the rest of the structure. So let's start by the first step, releasing the structure. We could choose to modify the support conditions at A, B, or C to, uh, to get this, this truss to only have three reactions, uh, preferably yeah, 1x and 2y reactions would be the easiest here. So let's release this truss at joint C and just basically take away that roller. So that roller is our redundant. We've chosen that to be our redundant. So next we have to write out our compatibility equation. So let's think about what the effect at joint C would be from the real loads in this case, the real load is P, that 30 kilonewton load acting at joint D, or the top of this truss. So there's a bit of a sign convention thing here, but uh, just to picture it, let's picture this, this uh, load P causing a, let's picture it causing a downwards displacement, actually. So a downwards displacement, and we're going to call that big delta, or just a triangle, delta C naught. So that is the deflection at joint C due to the real loads. Then we could also picture uh, our virtual system where our redundant is acting, redundant being a one kip load in the direction where our support was, support was. And let's call this delta CC, small delta just so we can tell the difference, but it's still a delta. So that's the deflection at C due to a uh, unit load acting at C. And later we're going to actually times that system by X. So that's why that X is there times the one kip load. So our compatibility equation is going to include both these things and we're wanting to ensure that the overall uh, deflection or change in location in the vertical direction of joint C is zero. So we're going to write out that this delta C naught plus this x times delta cc equals to zero because in part a we have no support settlement so the support has zero displacement. Now there's a few things I want to point out about this equation. If you look at the figure you can see I've drawn delta c naught in the opposite direction of delta cc but when we actually apply the equation we're going to consider both those values positive if the deflection is up and that's going to make that equation that we've drawn true. And the other thing that we should note is, again, I want to reiterate that x is a multiplication of the delta cc. The delta cc is the deflection due to a unit load, and when we multiply that deflection by x, we get the actual deflection. So you can think about it as we have this real system that's being released so we have a displacement at a point, and then this other system with the redundant needs to restore compatibility. It needs to bring that deflection back to what it should be, in this case, zero. Okay, so I've drawn a real released system and a redundant released system, okay? And the redundant released system we're going to be timesing by x. And I've actually done this analysis for you. I'll show you real quick here. Check my work, put any errors below. But you can see the results from the 30 kip load providing that deflection delta C naught. And then from the 1 kip load 
we have a delta CC in our redundant system. Could have used the three kip load if we wanted to and eliminated some of these fractions. So now it's time to solve for these two deflections we've identified. They're both in the compatibility equation. First we're going to solve for the delta C naught and then we'll solve for the delta CC. So we're going to use principle, virtual, principle of virtual work to do this. I've listed the equations here. So when we're solving for delta C naught, our P system is our real system and our Q system is this released system. And you can refer back to the video on the principle of virtual work for the details on that. So Q delta P 1 times delta C naught and in this case we just have the two members. Uh, so the first member is virtual load of Q times negative 22.5 and that length should be 15 not 18 times 12 over e, AE plus negative 5 over 3 times the 37.5 real load times 25 times 12 we're converting it to inches there over AE. So we wind up with a delta C naught of 0 0.448 inches. Next let's solve for the delta CC. And here's where things get a little bit interesting. So for our principle of virtual work equation we're going to use the Q system as the same as our P system. So our this release redundant system is our Q system and our P system. So we can change the equation if we like to Q delta P equals the sum of all the FQ squared L over AE. So there's no longer an FP and FQ, they're both from the same system here. So 1 times delta CC, and this time we have to take into account all the members. So 5 over 3 squared times 25 times 12 over AE times 2, and that times 2 is there because the 5 over 3 is both of these diagonal outside members. So we just times it by 2. And here, yes, I'm just realizing that this 18 should have been a 15, so switching that there. And in this calculation for delta CC, that's 2 squared times 15 times 12 over AE. Just Let's just write down the dimensions in here so as not to confuse people. Okay, and then lastly, we have these, both these members that have the 4 over 3 loads. So 4 over 3 squared times 20 is the length times 12 over AE. I'll have to multiply that by 2 for both members. Okay, hope you're still with me. So delta CC, we got to be 0 0.054 inches upwards. So one's down and one's up, similar to what we initially thought would happen. So now we just have to plug these into our compatibility equation and solve for x. And it's really that simple. So we'll do that just on the next screen here. So from our initial steps, like we said, literally all that's left is to plug in those two values we solved for into our compatibility equation to get x. So we have delta c naught and delta cc. So the equation looks like this, negative 0 0.448 inches plus x times 0 0.054 inches equals 0. x is actually our reaction at c, which comes out to be 8.3 kips. So we can see that um, the real answer, x, or the real answer, sorry, of the whole structure is the superposition of the released real system plus x times the released redundant system. So we could actually find all our member forces just doing the real member forces that we solved for in the release system and then adding x times the member forces in our released redundant system. And we can do the same for reactions. So I've done that here. As usual, feel free to check my work and put errors in the comments below. So uh, this is what we solve for. We can solve for the other two reactions. Well, you can do it two ways, like we said below, the superposition, or you can just use that one answer that you have, 8.3, and do your, um, your equations of equilibrium and solve for your other reactions and so on. Okay, so that was all with part A. Part B, what if we are adding the results of support settlement? So, if we recall back to the original, we know that it was asking for a settlement of 1 inches at support B, which is the middle support, 
and a half inch at support C, which is our far right support. So the first thing we do, we have to make a new compatibility equation because the settlement at C is no longer zero. So let's call it delta C, and that's going to be 0.5 inches. So when you have a support settlement at the redundant that you've chosen, that's going to appear right here on the right side of your compatibility equation. And this is different than the settlement at a different support, which you haven't chosen as a redundant. For example, the settlement at B being one inch, that has to come into play somewhere else. So we need to go back to the time when we solved for delta C naught, because we essentially have an extra load here, an additional real load, okay? Not just the 30 kip load, but we also have a support settlement. And that's, that's just like another real load that we have. And that shows up on the left side of the principle of vir virtual work equation when you have the, Q, the sum of all the Q delta P's. So you have the first Q delta P, which is QC delta C naught, but then we have another Q delta P, QB times delta B. Going back here, you can see that the QB is negative two, it's two going down. So negative two times delta B of one inch. And it's our same final answer, negative 0 0.448 inches. And this leads us to a delta C naught of negative 2.448 inches. So I actually just want to pause here for a second and let's take a look at what actually happened there. So we added an extra term to our principle of virtual work equation. And you can see that that extra term was the QB delta B. Basically, because support B settled, and because there was a reaction at support B, so a force, whenever you have a force and a settlement coinciding, there's work being done there. So whenever you have a force and a displacement, actually. So there was work being done at B. And the amount of virtual work that was done was this negative 2 times 1 inch. So that appears on the left side of our equation, and you can see negative 2 times 1 is just 2. Just realizing now that negative 2 times 1 should actually be a negative 2 times negative 1, and then when you move it over to the other side, it'll produce that negative 2.448 inches. But you can see it's just a, a direct addition, really, um, to the other side. That term there adds 2 inches of settlement at support C. Uh, so yeah, that's what we had to do there. We had to modify the principle of virtual work equation back when we computed it for the real, the real released system, okay? Now the delta CC value that we calculated is still valid. So delta CC is still going to be equal to 0 0.054 inches because that didn't matter that there was support displacements there. So we've actually taken into account both. We take into account the settlement at B in, in this what we just did, and previous to that, when we modified our compatibility equation, we are taking into account the settlement at C. So we have a new equation and a new solution. This time it's negative 2.448 inches plus x times 0 0.054 inches equals negative 0 0.5. Solving for x, we get 36.07 which we know is our reaction at C, our vertical reaction. And then we can also solve for RB and RA. And similarly to before, we can use superposition or we can just use that result from RC, use our equations for uh, equilibrium, solve for the other reactions and member forces that way. So now I'm just going to pencil in these final values from the analysis for part B. So we are done. Nice work. Uh, so yeah, any questions or comments, put them below. Uh, the principle of virtual work is it's very nice to use, and with indeterminate structures, the basic leap that you have to make in your mind is realizing that at some point you're going to have to perform a principle of virtual work analysis where the real system is the virtual system, okay? That's it for this example. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.